Hey everyone, World Film Geek here in my latest interviews with Ellen Holman. She's best known for her work on Roadhouse 2, Spartacus, and TV roles that you've done. Um, oh, thank you. That was such a blast to share. That was, uh, that was a great one. So um, I got to watch Army of One. I've actually watched it twice already. That's how much I really enjoyed the movie. <laughs> you were you were totally kick butt in it. And wow, that's all I got to say. Watching and your uh, your wonderful feedback, I really appreciate it. We uh, we literally put our blood, sweat, and tears into that one. Great. So, how did the project come about? Um, so, the director Stephen Durham and I um, actually collaborated on uh, a different project together, um, and also the EP Nico Foster and I worked together on a western uh, a couple years prior. So there's. There are some several lines there um, that allowed the secretary to come across uh, uh, my desk, per se. Um, when when I did come on board, uh, it, it was to come on board um, from a literary standpoint, from an action design standpoint, as well as uh, producing. I really wanted to have my, my, my talents and every aspect of it uh, really put my stamp on it. That's awesome. And, uh, what, yeah, what is your background? I know you have a, I'm sure you have a martial arts background because you did your, looks like you did your own stuff in it and you were great. Um, so what are you, uh, trained in? Yeah, so the one thing my husband and I, Stephen Dunleavy, who is the stunt coordinator of Army of One, uh, he and I also collaborated quite a bit on second unit, uh, directing. Uh, we both have a background in, in jujitsu and, um, over the past six Six or so years, uh, I've, I've been heavily delving into the judo and uh, world of fight choreography through my husband's stunt team, 82nd Eleven, who uh, oh, do they're, all the action design. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they are, they're, they're the elite. <laughs> they, right, yeah, no, they, they, are, they are the uh, the elite team that, that uh, has certainly made a, a reputation for themselves. Um, through the John Wick franchise, Deadpool, Atomic Blonde, and um, I've been fortunate enough to to be a, a not just the fly on the wall, but the fly that gets thrown on the ground and is throwing them on the ground. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, and you, uh, you'll, yeah. You'll, you'll actually see very John Wick esque choreography in Army of One that uh, I've learned over the years from that. That's awesome, and it was a great stellar supporting cast in the film. Um, I, rec I recognized Gary Casper, who played Butch. I recognized him from Redwood Massacre, which I watched earlier this year. And, um, yeah, the rest of the cast was amazing. What were they all like? I mean, they all seem to have different personalities in terms of their not only their characters, but, like, you know, it's just like it was all it, it was just like the chemistry was there. That's how I felt. Right? You never know. It's such a mixed bag. Like, in the casting process, uh, Geraldine, who plays uh, Mama, stood out from the rest because she brought a certain empathy mm -hmm. and caring to her character. Uh, and I think a lot of times the pitfall of playing a villain is that you think you have to be unlikable, where it is actually the exact opposite. Um, if you're going to do heinous things, it, we're only going to care if we like you. And uh, she brought this sweetness and this warmth, which made the dichotomy even more unsettling on screen. Yeah, I can say that. <laughs> uh, uh, and then uh, Matt Passmore, who we were fortunate enough to get um, at, at the last minute. Um, oh, my God, he was such an incredible team player. He literally flew in, shot his stuff, and then flew out a few days later. Wow. So, yeah. So we... we didn't have any time to actually meet or uh, interact with one another until we were basically on set together. Yeah. Um, which just really shows what an incredible actor he is. Uh, he's just so giving and so open um, and, and willing to work incredibly long hours and be put in these <laughs> highly uncomfortable situations like duct tape on your face at four o'clock in the morning while we cover blood all over your face <laughs> <laughs> all over all over him he was just such a team player i, I have nothing but amazing things to say about him 
That's awesome. And yeah, I, you know, it's it may seem like a typical standard revenge plot in some ways, but I like the fact that your character is a soldier and we get to see that in some of the flashbacks. And I think that's what made, um, you know, because you always see like a certain type of female action star. It's always like something involving a lover, but it depends on their background, what happens. And you just blew it away with the soldier stuff. Thank you, uh, and that, that really means a lot because I, I, uh, I have such a, a, a big place in my heart for the military, and I really wanted to do justice to Brenner Baker um, as, as a woman in the military. Um, and that, that uh, a lot of times we see on screen a woman is scorned, and then all of a sudden she kicks all these guys' asses through because she did a three-minute montage and learned how to defend herself. It's like, that's not how that happened. Like, <laughs> it has taken me many, many years doing jiu-jitsu and getting certified as an assistant instructor for a women in power program and, and just uh, getting getting my blue belt and, and hopefully graduating to purple. So, um, but just you have to put in the time. Yeah. Because you can you can learn something in your fun little montage, but when when you have a gun to your head, can you do it? Uh, is it second nature? Um, so the answer is no, unless you put in your time. Um, and those in the military put in their time. Mm-hmm. And then it does become when the pressure does uh, start to crush you, you can you can react in a a defensive way and and that's something that i really wanted to bring to screen and uh fortunately uh, jujitsu is infused in a lot of the uh military training whether it's the ranger program or uh uh just the uh, the army um all aspects really um which is why it was a no-brainer um to incorporate that into the choreography because it's believable yeah Um, you see you know, a 120 pound woman punch a bunch of guys in the face, she's going to break her hand and it's not believable. Right. Um, but if you use their weight and their size against them, if you use speed, uh, the element of surprise, uh, your agility, then you believe what you're seeing. And, uh, uh, and what you said prior, um, it looks like I did all my own stuff. Well, the reason it looks like that is because I did. Right. <laughs> and that was something that, was something that um, my uh, my husband and I uh, insisted upon when it came to action design, that every every uh, stunt person, every actor, every stunt actor uh, would be doing their own choreography so that it was believable. There's no face replacement. There's no tricky CGI. There's no stunt doubles. Uh, everything you see on screen um, the performer brought to life uh, through their own discipline. Yeah, and I know, and I noticed when <laughs> I think my favorite line is when you said you were going to clean house. That had to be my favorite line of the whole movie. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you just go, you just go into the hallway and you just start going at it. And I, not only did I see jujitsu, I saw little shades of Krav Maga mixed in some of that choreography. I think yeah, that's, and I noticed because I I did take a couple. Yeah. yeah, I took a couple of Krav Maga classes years ago, so I kind of know. <laughs> How, you know how that plays and you that was amazing like you just grabbed the guy's leg and you just went at it and man that's like my oh, cup that, of tea that's actually <laughs> it's so funny because uh just uh, what you're grazing upon is actually the runner that uh, uh yeah. my husband and i really wanted to accomplish because he's i mean he's used to working on the john wick and deadpool where you know it's they have weeks and weeks and weeks of rehearsal. I only had an hour with the stunt guys before we shot that. <laughs> wow. Um, and yes, and in uh, uh, Dunleavy and I, I call my husband by his last name. That's just what I've, <laughs> just what I've always done. Uh, Dunleavy and I really, uh, we really worked that out together um, and did the previs and uh, how we wanted the camera to move so that we could shoot it in one shot. Um, and I really wanted it to almost have a, a comedic tone to it where you're just like, Oh my God. <laughs> and I wanted, I wanted the audience to feel the adrenaline rush. Cause I literally inject myself with adrenaline and I wanted it to feel crazy, <laughs> um, crazy, but composed at the same time. I totally um, felt it. Element, right. Like there, there's certain, um, tones I really 
wanted to accomplish with it. Uh, uh, and one of the trickiest things with one of is the reset is a bitch. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for those listening, once you do actually see this one or you can't miss it. <laughs> right. It's I... this massive sequence in the, in the, in the, in the final act. Uh, there's breakaways. There's like knives in the wall. There's so many wrecks. And just the reset alone on that, you're talking about like an hour. Yeah. Um, and you only have a limited amount of time, a limited amount of light, a limited amount of uh, breakaways. And believe it or not, uh, we got that on the first take. That is amazing. Wow. I couldn't Are... believe it. I remember when we, when we all cut, I just had this feeling when I walked out the hallway. I was like, everyone was just like jumping up and down like, oh my God. I'm like, oh wait. Let me see playback. I need to make sure every hit sold. I need to make sure, like, I'm uh, when it comes to action, I'm very specific. Like, I really want to make sure every hit sold, and um, that's where camera angles really come into play because mm-hmm. you know you, you never actually punch someone or kick someone or you know take a hammer to someone's face in in reality. Um, right. Well, at least that's not the <laughs> that's not what you're supposed to do. Sometimes it happens accidentally. But what works with one camera angle may not sell for the next hit. So that ever-moving camera has to make sure it's, it's covering it properly. And, oh. that's, and also your actors. Like, your, your stunt performers and your actors have to be on point every single time, which means it may look accidental on screen where I'm throwing the guy over his own head, but he's falling off his mark every single time. That's so amazing. Yeah, so thank, thank you for pointing that out. That, that's actually like, you know, <laughs> yeah. my, my favorite on-screen moments. I'm like, I can't believe we pulled that out with no time and no budget. Yeah, that's amazing. And that, that's I'm see, starting to see the wonders are now becoming the the rage when it comes to action scenes. Um, just as recently, I watched uh, Jiu Jitsu with Nicolas Cage, and they did a wonder. And it got to the point where you even get to see a first person hardcore Henry style point of view from the main character during that. So I, I got to talk to the lead of that, Aline Moussi, and I asked him who came up with that idea. Cause that wonder was the sickest thing in the movie where, and then all of a sudden it cuts to you doing a first person point of view. He's like, Oh, that was actually the director and our DP. He thought it'd be a good idea to try that. And yeah, hardcore Henry was an influence. And I'm, I'm like, now hearing this, I'm like, wonders are like becoming the big thing now. Right, because it's, it's, uh, and it's so funny because people think, like, oh, this is such a new thing. It's like, no, that's just called theater. No, it's, <laughs> yeah. Theater, everything is one take. Like, everything, you know, you don't get another take in theater. So it's actually, um, you know, that's where I started out in theater in New York. And it's like, that's, you're going back to your roots, essentially. But the challenge is selling those hits. Exactly. Selling those hits. And if one performer misses their mark, you have to start all over again. Yeah. Um, which makes the stakes even higher. Um, and because of that, there's like a certain adrenaline rush. And of course, when you do it right and you pull it off, there's such an incredible feeling that comes along with that. That's amazing. I mean, overall, the movie is great. And I got to say, I'm hoping because it, it looked like from the the very tail end of it. I'm not spoiling it, but I could possibly see a sequel to this. Somehow, some way, I see I see your character returning in a sequel. Well, you know, what's really interesting is that um, I've always believed that every film should uh, be buttoned up, uh, buttoned up properly mm-hmm. by the time it reaches its datum lot, which means you have to have your beginning, middle, and end. Uh, in case something happens and there is no possibility of a sequel for whatever reason. Uh, however, that being said, you can leave little Easter eggs, uh, little, little possibilities that, that, uh, could lead into a sequel. And we certainly did that. Yeah. <laughs> we certainly left some, some little, uh, uh, pebbles on the path that could lead to a sequel, depending upon how this is, uh, received and um, you know what resources uh, are available to make a sequel. So we'll we'll, we'll just have to see. 
Awesome. So, um, all right, let's put the elephant in the room. We're going to get ready to see you in Matrix 4 soon. And uh, that's got to be exciting. I mean, I'm still pinching myself. I, uh, my, I, I'm i still in disbelief. It, it feels like some weird, bizarre dream. Um, <laughs> potentially nightmare with how... <laughs> I shouldn't say potentially nightmare, but it feels like a really uh, uh, bizarre dream, like Alice in Wonderland. Because it, it, what I mean by that is Lana Wachowski likes to shoot everything practically. Mm-hmm. So you aren't, it, like, she puts you in the actual danger. Um, you're never unsafe, uh, but she does really add that element of danger. Um, an example is. And this is all public. You can actually see this online, which is the only reason I could talk about it. Um, right. There's a scene that two actors jump off a 50-story building with no net at sunrise in San Francisco. Wow. And you can look it up online and imagine being someone in an office building doing your Zoom meeting in the morning and you see two people jump off a building and then all of a sudden stop in the middle of the air and then get pulled back up to one over and over and over and over. <laughs> she really wanted her performers to jump off the building and center. You could have easily done that. Yeah. Easily that's... done that via green screen or the studio, but there's something terrifying and mystifying about knowing that that actually happened. And my husband was part of the, uh, uh, rigging and engineering team that designed that entire uh, sequence. Wow. I, I remember saying to Hubby, I'm like, <laughs> you better not screw this one up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot riding on this. Um, and then another uh, example is that um, there is this chase sequence in the streets of San Francisco. Um, and she actually had two SWAT helicopters weaving in between the streets at street light level and then blew the street up. Oh my God. Yeah, that's not CGI. That that shit actually happened. That's amazing. Uh, I'm that's it like actually happened. <laughs> that's like the old that's like the old school days. I that I totally like I miss those old days of action and then you know the whole CGI took over and now I'm I'm glad to see like the old school style is coming back and it really you know cuz it brings a more authenticity to it to the projects. It, it does. Like, I feel like you can always tell. Just like when you can tell that it's actually an actor doing their own action, um, you can always tell if something's CGI. Mm-hmm. And there's, uh, you know, talking about authenticity. Um, even though Matrix obviously is a, a much higher budget <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, film, they still, at the core of it, is the authenticity. Uh, what you're watching on screen actually happens. Um, going back to its roots, and that's something that I wanted to accomplish with Army of One, that there aren't any tricks. Like, it's what you see is what you get, and because of that, there's um, a certain respect, I, I, I feel, that um, is deserved. I totally agree, and I hope everyone gets to see Army of One when it comes out on December 15th. And seriously, I think you are going to be the next big female action star at this point, and I hope it does with this movie. I cannot wait to see you in Matrix 4, and I just can't wait to see you kicking more butt on screen. Hands down. Oh, thank you so much. I really really appreciate that. It's it's taken uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. (laughs) Awesome. So aside from Matrix 4, my final question, are there any other new projects that you're getting involved in or just going to see what happens? Yes, uh, actually, currently out is uh, Love and Monsters with Michael Rooker, Dylan O'Brien, and Jeff Penwick, who also, she also happens to be one of my castmates on Matrix 4. Um, that, that was released uh, uh, that was in streaming. Yeah. Unfortunately, we couldn't, we couldn't do the theatrical release. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's on streaming as well. You can find that uh, online. It's a... Uh, 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 such a feel good, uh, um, such a feel good movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
it really turned out great. Um, I have a um, a fun a fun role in that uh, with a cannon for an arm. So if you're curious as to what I look like with a bowhawk and a cannon for an arm, check out Love and Monsters. Awesome. So, got everyone, everyone listening, you all, you all got to check Ellen out. She's gonna be. I think she's gonna be the next one of the next big female action stars. Check her out in Army of One when it comes out on December fifteenth. Check her out in Love and Monsters now, and check her out next year in Matrix Four. Ellen, you're awesome, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk about everything. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.